I, I mentioned throughout the year uh, Rabbi Rashi. So this is the tour portion where I introduce who he is. Rabbi Rashi, from the age of four, three or four years old, was studying Hebrew, studying the Bible, the first five books. He spent, he dedicated his entire life to understanding Hebrew. He spent a lifetime trying to figure out what it all meant. Like, Moses had a good understanding of it. He was face to face with the Lord. But everybody else, it's a little difficult sometimes. But God had his people write down letter for letter on the Torah scrolls what this was, what his word was. His teaching and instruction, the Torah, in the beginning, let there be light. That's the light we're talking about here. We're not talking about luminaries, sun and moon and stars. We're, the light, let there be light is teaching, instruction, it's Torah, it's God's words. God's words. And uh, really, the only true words are those first five books because we have to deal with translations on everything else. Genesis 1, in the beginning, Yahweh says that Yahweh created. So Yahweh creates the angels. And then, he said, and then the angels blow it. So he says, I'm going to create man. And I'm going to put my spirit. What's his spirit? His teaching instruction. I'm going to give him the breath of Torah. I'm going to teach him Torah. And he'll choose not to stray from it. He'll choose to obey it. And he says, so I created all this. I'm the owner of it. I decide. Yahweh's saying, I decide how you're to walk your walk. You can't decide how you're going to walk your walk. He says, I decide what, how I want you to walk your walk. Verse 2, the earth had no order. The earth was in chaos. Why did the earth have no order? There was no Torah. He says, let there be light. I give you all the scriptures that say Torah is light. And we're, and we're to carry that light. That light's supposed to be in us. So what's supposed to be in us? The Torah. God's teaching and instruction. They taught from Sinai. They spoke to Moses every day for 40 years. That's what's supposed to be in us. Okay. So when Yeshua says, go on to all the earth and make disciples, what is he wanting us to do? He's wanting us to teach People, how to keep the seventh day Sabbath. That's one of the most important things to the Lord that there is, is keeping his Sabbaths. And yet, many Torah keepers don't keep it. Most of the Christian church don't keep it, okay? They're doing their walk, their way. And God says there's only one walk, and that's my walk. And he talks about, uh, and you can see right there, about three-fourths down, do a word search of light. Read all those verses. It's really good. Then verse 14, then, then he says he creates the luminaries. So don't you see the difference between the light and the, the light of the sun, the moon, stars, stuff like that? And then ver I love verse 26, let us make man in our image. What image is that? What image are we talking about? What he spoke from Sinai, his only words to people. It's Torah. If we walk in his image, if we're created in his image, then we walk in his image, we're doing the Torah. Genesis 2. This is seven verses after verse 26. Let us make man in our image. Seven verses later, he says, I rested on the seventh day, and I'm telling you to rest on the seventh day. So, yeah, I, get it, I hear it all the time. I can worship God seven days a week, 24-7. 365 days a year? Yes, you can. But there are 59 special days when God says, you shall assemble in my name. You shall worship me. You shall praise me. And you will give that day to me because I do something special on these days. You know, we pray all these prayers all the time. Lord, help me. Help me do this. Help me do that. And yes, he wants to hear and answer every prayer you pray. But what are you giving him? You're wanting a miracle. I'm wanting a miracle. I've prayed for miracles in my life. But what does he want from me? He wants me to obey his 59 Sabbath. So if you're only obeying half of them, 
You, you're, you're tying God's hands on 50% of what he can do for you. Because he's looking at you and saying, well, you missed yesterday. And you may have had a valid reason, and that's a good thing if you did. I pray you did. He says, I rested. If, listen, if you're not keeping the 59 Sabbaths, your image is blemished. You're still going to be blessed. You're not going to lose your salvation. But your image is blemished. He's coming for a bride without blemish. This is scripture. I'm reading to you. Yahweh does not change. Well, show me the verse. He changed the Sabbath to Sunday. Show it to me. That big a deal, all your apostles would have been assembling on Sunday. They would have been preaching on Sunday. And Paul would have been going to church on Sunday. Paul never went to church on Sunday. I'm telling you. He sailed on a boat on Sunday after the Shabbat was over. It says first of the Sabbaths. Three versions say he that was Sabbath, the seventh day, and he sailed the next day. That was Sunday. But you can do Sunday. I, we did it. Lana and I did it for a long time. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But what are you doing on Saturday? Okay. Not do your own pleasure, Isaiah 58. Uh, I love verse 18. This is Genesis 2, verse 18. Oh, no, I got to go back up to 16, 70. God cares about what you eat. He said, don't eat of this tree. Satan says, oh, you won't die. Serpent says, you won't die. Eat that, eat that fruit. He's doing the same thing today. He's saying, you won't die. You can do the Sunday thing. You won't die. He's doing the same thing today. But so many say, well, I can pray over my food and make it clean. That is a lie. You cannot. Because if God calls it an ab pork an abomination, if he calls it an abomination, and there are many other things he calls an abomination, substituting the Sabbath is one of them, you cannot pray over something God has made an abomination and make it holy, make it beneficial to you. You cannot do that. Or you're making yourself a God. You're saying, I'm God. I can make this food healthy. Can't do it. I love verse 18. It's not good that a man be alone. Okay? We got single people in here. It's my prayer that you all, all you guys get married. Okay? If you want it. You know? That's a big deal to do if you want it because I like being married. I think marriage is better than the other way. I was single 15 years and I was a very unhappy person. I look back at my life. I look at it as 15 wasted years. I really do. Then I met Lana. And uh, I still screw up sometimes. And keep, I should be keeping my mouth shut. I did it this morning. There, a man needs a wife. A woman needs a husband. And believe me, there are rules for courtship and marriage. There are rules. Like a writ of marriage, a writ of divorce. It has to be sanctioned by the ruling authorities in the county or state in which you live. That's a given, okay? There are rules. And premarital counseling is a good thing. We went through premarital counseling. I think uh, when Lana and I met, I went to the pastor after three months and says, I'm ready to get married. Or I think I'd already gotten the ring. And he said, what's your hurry? And I said, well, I don't guess there really is a hurry. And believe me, I thought I knew her at three months. At one year, when we finally did get married, I still didn't know her because I learned over the next year of marriage. You know, and the next year, it took two or three years of being married to really learn about somebody, okay? But a year of courtship and dating is a lot better than three months, you know? Or three weeks, or three hours. You know, some believe in love at first sight. I know, I, I know some of you've done it. So okay, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> a man has to leave his father, a mother, and become one flesh. You cannot keep a secret. If you're keeping a secret from your spouse, you are in sin. 
Why? Because you're one flesh. You're not supposed to keep secrets. You can't do that, okay? Genesis 3. He said, the serpent made me do it. Sometimes we're our worst enemy. We, you know, there was a show on TV, uh, The Devil Made Me Do It. He was a real funny guy. The devil made me do it. The devil didn't make you do it. You chose to do it. Uh, Adam and Eve's pride caused them to want to believe the lie instead of God. And then, uh, so if you look at the order of things we're talking about here, this is foundational truths for our walk. We're going to get to the walk of Enoch here in a minute. Then next week or the week after that, we get to the walk of Noah. And then finally, we get to the walk of Abraham. Noah's walk was better than Enoch's. Abraham's walk was perfect. Okay, better than Noah's even. Okay. So now it talks about bringing an offering. So as your walk improves, you bring the proper offering. Abel brought the proper offering. Yahweh gives us the breath of li our life each day. Should we not bring him the proper offering? He says it's 10%. Okay. Verse 5. This is Genesis 4, verse 5. Cain was annoyed with God, Yahweh, because God approved Abel's offering but didn't like his. And so God told Cain, he said, Look, if you'll just bring me the right offering... I'll forgive you. But why Why didn't Cain ask for forgiveness? Pride. He thought his walk was better than Abel's, so he kills Abel. And then the blood cries from the ground, and that's what I pray against every week. There's blood this past week crying from the ground. That body part was probably sold overseas or to the rich or to the famous for some reason or whatever. But blood has been spilt this past week. Please pray every night against the evil. And pray the kingdom come. That's the only thing that's going to stop it. A conservative president get in in the United States, it will not stop this evil. This evil, we are just like Sodom and the days of Noah. I'm telling you, we are there. We're, it's no longer almost there. No, we are there. Okay. Then uh, it says that uh, Adam and Eve have a son. Name him Seth. Okay, Seth is where the light, righteous lineage passes down all the way to King David and, and, and other uh, the saints, okay, uh, on the earth. Verse 23, 24 says, that Enoch lived 365 years. And uh, I, I'd like to challenge that because uh, uh, the interpretation of that, because most people say, oh, he only lived 365 years. And if he's not living, he's either dead or in heaven, right? I mean, if you're, you're raptured to heaven, you didn't die, or you're, you're living or you're dead. So he said he only lived 365 years. Listen, most of his friends, his family, his parents lived 900 plus years. What's wrong with this picture? 365 years. What's wrong with that? I can prove from the book of Enoch, if it's true in the book of Enoch, he lived 500 years. And the, but the main verse that I would get is, it's appointed once for man to die. Did Yeshua have to die? I mean, he didn't have to die, but God allowed him to die. So did Yeshua die? He did. Every man at some point will die until death is defeated. When does that occur? the great white throne judgment. That's a thousand years from now. When death is defeated and new heavens, new earth is made, uh, established on the earth, then death is defeated, then you receive your eternal life. Yeshua's own words said, no one has ascended to heaven, not Enoch, not Elijah, not Abraham, no one except me who died and was resurrected. Born again with a new body. The first of the resurrection. He's the first fruits of the resurrection. He's the first one to have an eternal body. Okay? I'm not saying Enoch didn't have a dream. 
uh, a visiting like the third heaven or something like that. I'm not talking about that. But he, either he's dead or he's in heaven. And Yeshua says in his own words, he's not in heaven. I'm the only one that could be in heaven. Okay? We're not talking about a dream here or something like that. These first foundational things that we're talking about, being a light, uh, being married, uh, a few other things. I want to read Malachi 2, verse 7. Uh, and you can read the fine print there. Go online and read the fine print where I said Enoch did not walk a perfect life. That's why he was taken. Enoch was translated. It's the same word used for Philip. Philip was baptizing the eunuch from Ethiopia. And uh, the, the eunuch says, uh, uh, he, he says, well, tell me about this Jesus. And so he explained the death, burial, and resurrection. He explained it to him. He said, well, there's some water. Baptize me. So he got baptized and uh, believe, became a believer and then took that faith back to Ethiopia. And Ethiopia became a great Christian nation at that time. But then what happened to Philip? Just read. He was translated from where he was to Ashdod. He disappeared. He was raptured. He was, it's called harpazo. He was grabbed and snatched just like Elijah and just like Enoch. Why, did he, why was Elijah, get off topic here just a bit, but why was Elijah snatched? He was tired of ministry. Don't you remember? He was a great prophet doing all these miracles, and he loved the Lord. But he said, I'm the only one left. God's telling him, look, there's five, I've got 5,000 left that believe me, that do the Torah, or it might have been three. I forget the exact verse, what the verse says. But he was still tired. He went to Mount Sinai, and he heard that still small voice, and God told Elijah, look, if you will just go anoint this prince from Assyria, and if you will just do this, and if you will just do this, I will relieve you of your role as a prophet. Because he was chosen by God to be a prophet. He was tired of ministry. And I can give you verses where he, God translated him from where he was. And they say, chariots of fire. Yeah, that chariot took him to another place. People that could see in the spirit saw God take him to another place. Did not take him to heaven. Enoch, sages say sometimes he would err. His walk wasn't perfect. And he was the leader. And yes, he did receive special uh, revelation from the Lord. And, and maybe, yes, he did see the last days and what would happen to God's people in the end. And yes, he did understand the Bible probably better than anybody in his time. But he erred at times. So God took him out of the public view. And then he was taken to another place on earth. And then he died. Okay? And that word, uh, he, back to that um, translation thing, Hebrews 11, bottom page 3, that's Hebrews 11, 5, says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. That's taken from one place to another. It's a mistranslation due to translator bias. They, they were saying that Enoch in Hebrews, he's saying the translators are saying Enoch was taken so he would not see death. That's incorrect. He was taken so that they would not see his death. So there's a difference there because he had to die. Malachi 2, verse 7. For the lips of a priest, this would apply to Enoch, Elijah, me, and you ought to preserve knowledge. What's that? Wisdom from God. God. That's Torah, wisdom. And from his mouth, men should seek instruction because you are the messenger of the Lord Almighty. Everyone in here is a messenger of the Lord God Almighty, okay, to share the gospel 59 Sabbaths with people. And you got to do it in love, and you got to do it in a certain way that you're kind of asking a question sometimes, or they ask the question. They might ask the question. They say, why do you do this? Why do you do that? 
say, well, since I started doing it, man, God's really blessed me, you know, or, or something. God will give you the words to say so that you can, can reach them, okay? Sometime ask me about my UPS story. Um, I'll just briefly tell it to you, be real brief. God cares about every little thing, and he definitely cares about big things too. Sometimes we just pray about the big things, but he cares about little things. And uh, one time I mailed a package, and uh, I said, Lord, send me a UPS truck. I know this sounds weird. I said, send me a UPS truck. I pull up the light, and there goes a the UPS truck. I said, cool, because I had to mail a package, and, and they'd already closed. closed so I, I, I pulled up the side of the truck, said, can you take it? And he took it. And then the next week goes by, or another week goes by, I'm, I'm asking the Lord about something, if he'll do something for me. And, and you've got to be careful about this. You don't want to test God, you know. But he was teaching me something. So next week, I, I, I'm thinking, well, when if that will work again? You know, this is early on in my walk with the Lord. We're talking about the, our walk, okay? And I prayed, Lord, would you do that again? Would you send a UPS driver? And uh, so I had to go to the bank first that the week prior and then drop the package off at UPS. And so I get to the light. I don't see the UPS truck go by. Go to the bank, make my deposit, pull out, no UPS truck. I'm thinking, well, it worked once. You know, I was pretty good. You know, thank you, Lord. And then I went to the lake because I had some stuff to do down there on my pontoon boat. I don't have it anymore, but I had a pontoon boat. I take it out in the water. And as I'm coming back to the boat dock, uh, I see the boat dock, and I see a UPS truck coming down the hill to the boat dock. So I hurry up, park my boat. I go up to him, and I say, hey, I got a package up in the car. Could you take it? He says, sure, no problem. I say, oh, by the way, how often do you come down here on Friday? He says, I never come down here on Friday. <laughs> now, if that don't give you a few cold chills, I don't know what would, but it sure did me, Okay. But I didn't try it a third time. See, that's tempting God. See, he taught me the lesson. He cares about little things. Every little, the hair on your head. He doesn't want you to stuff your toe, okay? But it depends on your walk. Are you keeping his 59 Sabbath, okay? Genesis 6. Yahweh says that he will not quarrel with mankind forever. That his days will be 120 years. That word is shana in the Hebrew. It means period of time. We're talking about God's calendar here. We're not talking about our calendar. And on God's calendar, he believes in weeks, months, and years. Annual years that come around every year and then there's something called a sabbatical year that's seven annual years and then there's the jubilee year that's every 49 years so in this verse 120 he's talking about jubilee years now you say how do you know that well i've studied it extensively uh, all the people that teach uh, daniel's timeline they use the sabbatical year the seven years and there may be a correlation there but i love the fact that he revealed to me it's 49 years, and he's revealed this to many other people. And because he tells Daniel there'll be seven weeks, 62 weeks, and one week. And I can prove from the scriptures, Second Kings, and other things, that we are in the final one week when we're cut off in the middle, and that was 2020. A jubilee week is 49 years. So man's time to rule on the earth is 70 weeks, and you're cut off in the last week in the middle. We're in that final week. It began in 1996. It ends in 2045 when the kingdom age begins. You're cut off in the middle, 24 years. That's 2020. And what happened in 2020? I'll tell you what happened in 2020. A new life form was introduced to the earth, not created by God created by man a new life form so you want to be real careful about things you want to be having the you want to have the right walk and the reason i say that is you're going to need god's help to make it with what's coming we've just seen the tip of the iceberg about how evil these people are 
And if you knew how evil they were, and believe me, I know how evil they are, and a few people in here do, you'd be praying every night or several times a day. You might be like Daniel. You might be praying three times a day. Please, Lord, come remove this evil. Okay? Verse 4 of Genesis 6, there were giants in the land, Nephthalim or whatever. I won't really get into that. All I'd like to say about that is this, because there's a big debate out there about who the Nephilim are and giants in the last days and all this stuff. I want to say it was genetic engineering. Genetic engineering. To create the giants. Because some people say, well, it was, it was by sex to create these giants. I tend to not think that, okay? I think it was these angels... This demonic people had the knowledge to genetically engineer the DNA so that there would be giants. And then it, some of it lasted past the flood, and that's why there were giants uh, that some people in our after the flood had to deal with. I think, uh, I think uh, Caleb, uh, when he got his portion in uh, uh, the Middle East and the, the Promised Land, he had to go kill a couple giants that were still around. I think he did. The half to rise, good. It's talking about, I am your creator. I Yahweh have called you to be righteous. I give you the breath. The breath. I put the breath in you. He's talking about doing Torah here. He's talking about the same thing. Do my Torah. And then I'll redeem you if you just do it. And he said, a fire is coming to burn the wicked. So... You'll be protected from the fire. And then in the Brit Hadashah in John 1, in the beginning was the word light. He's quoting Genesis 1-3 here. Don't you see it? John's such a special apostle. And then in Revelation 22, he says, uh, I'm coming back to judge your works. What's he talking about? Yeshua's own words. I'm coming back to judge your works. Don't you know the works have been explained throughout the whole Bible? Especially the first five books, your works are keeping God's teaching instruction. Keeping his moral civil laws, keeping his Sabbaths, there's 59. That's your works. Okay. Blessed are they that do the Torah, light works. Okay, we'll go to page eight. It's a real good handout. So if you need a copy, just email me and I'll email it to you. Email me. Does any. Maybe I need to write my email on the, on the bulletin board. That's what I'll do. Because not every time can I... I've been pretty busy. Have we been pretty busy this week with Sukkot and everything? And, and then getting this together today, uh, I didn't get everything right with the screen and stuff. But anyway, it's okay. I can email you these notes. We are to walk in this light. Let there be light. We are to walk in this light. So what's the Bible definition of light? Matthew 5, you are the light of the world, Torah keepers. John 1, 8, John the Baptist was sent to bear witness of the light. That's Yeshua. He says, I am the light. He who follows me shall walk in the light. 1 John 1, we, if we walk in the light, he is in the light. And I say, Torah, we are in communion with Yeshua. Psalm 27, Yahweh is my light. Psalm 119, thy word, Torah, is a light. Proverbs 4, thy my path, your path, walk of the righteous man is as the light of the morning star. And then, of course, the kicker verse is Proverbs 6.23. The law, Torah, is a light. Conclusion, John 14.15. This was the verse I put in my billfold after I got saved in 2000. Saved for about the 50th time, but this one stuck. And this is the verse I put in my billfold. It's all kind of old looking now i still got it if you love me you will keep my torah i didn't understand what that meant when i put it in my billfold i'm still learning and i pray that we sharpen each other when we get together and we're able to do his torah i say they are the 52 weekly sabbaths the seven annual high sabbaths the first tithe and the second tithe tithing is important to god offerings do you support your local assembly with your talents, your time, your energy? Do you guard your lips and watch what you say to your loved ones? Are you a witness? 
Okay. We'll go to slides. <clears throat> 